Good evening and welcome to another episode of the podcast, episode 93. Uh, we're going to talk about trucks, uh, specifically new trucks. And, you know, we have not, um, we've not been shy about our opinions of new trucks, especially those built between 2008 and 2015. Uh, you know, we're not you go back shy about opinions about anything, are we? <laughs> well, that's one hundred percent true. <laughs> uh, you know, you can go back and, and and listen to older episodes of the podcast and and my story of of dealing with a a new truck and and there's just a lot of risk and um, you know, success in business is all about managing risk and lowering expenses. And these new trucks make that very very difficult. It you know the risk is high, the cost is high. Um, and it takes a lot of preparation, um, to, to handle these new trucks. And so Larry gets the question quite often, well, can I be a lunatic and drive a new truck? And they don't the always say lunatic, but they, they, yeah. <laughs> they said, can you help me out if I don't have an older truck? And, uh, you know, the answer to that is yes, but limit it, it's limited you know because a lot of the things we do you can't do to that because it would modify the emissions you know so right you know we the the, the things that we do and the reason we do them you know again the, the the general reason is we we've identified several things that cause first-time owner operators buying a first-time truck that fail um and we talk about all the things that we can do to minimize the risk of that failure and we've identified one of the main ones is obviously controlling cost. And fuel is the number one cost of operating a truck, uh, not counting the driver. And usually fuel is not a very difficult thing to attack because it's usually just decisions. And uh, the problem with, uh, with some of the newer trucks is we can't do anything about some of the fuel improvement things because we can't tinker with the... With the, with the exhaust system very much. It doesn't do any good to add more air to the engine. We can't get it out. So it's um, it's a little futile there. We can still do a lot of things in other areas of the truck to help with uh, the, with, with lowering the fuel um, costs by improving fuel mileage in some areas. But there again, we're limited, you know, because of that. Um, but we still find, look, we've had several guys have come to our live event that had new trucks. And we even have two Kenworth T680s in our fleet right now that we manage for other BCOs. And so we're experimenting that, um, why are you shaking your head? Because <laughs> cause those two tracks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're, you know, we're experimenting with things right now. You know, uh, one of the two guys is coming to the live event, which is going to be real eye opener for him. And I think he's going to be very receptive to a lot of things that we want to do. The other one, not so much. So, um, but, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see what we can do, but, um, um, you know, Chris, it's, it's just a matter of trying to do the best you can with what you got. That's well, you got, you yeah. kind of got to break it down. Okay. Obviously the first, the first obstacle with a new truck is acquisition cost. You know, a, yes. a decent 2016 truck that's in decent shape is going to bring, you know, 30 to $40,000, right? So it's what, just... What year? What year did you say? 16. 16, okay. Yeah. A 16 is going to bring, you know, it's going to cost you at least 30 to 40 grand just to get your hands on it, just to acquire it. All right. Then you have, you know, it, it's going to need, you do, you absolutely need a guess. I, and I'm, I'm starting to believe that the OPS is even more important on the newer trucks than it is even the older trucks for the diagnostic tool that it is. Um, you need the good tires. You, you can't, you can get a fleet air filter, but you can't do a muffler cause it doesn't have a muffler. Um, you know, you could do air tabs. There's some things that you can do, but even these new trucks, we have a 16 and an 18 and even you know, the, they're both in really good shape. If you walked up to them, you would be like, oh, wow, this is a nice truck. And both of them, Carl has got under and said, oh, wow, this is wrong and that's wrong. And it needs this and it needs that. And all this is leaking and this is about to be. And um, so your acquisition cost is one thing, okay, versus 
Zeke just goes and buys a $5,300 truck. Okay. But, uh, you have the ongoing maintenance costs and the unexpected and that risk we've been fortunate so far. Um, these trucks, these two trucks that we're operating have not cost us any major downtime yet. Um, other than the five days that we left it at a Kenworth dealer and they couldn't find a damn fuse missing. Um, but fortunately the truck didn't have a driver at that point and it didn't lose, you know, $1,800 a day in revenue for these jack wagons to sit around and look for, and hunt for their laptop. Um, but we have seen, I've lived it that these trucks can get ridiculously expensive really fast. And, uh, uh, Oh, our, one of our guys was down in uh, a Freightliner dealer in Knoxville last week had, he was had an air leak in a transmission and there was a guy in there that had been there a week and a half waiting on a knock sensor. You know, I don't have those kinds of weights on my part on my trucks. Now I would, if I left it up to them to find the parts, you know, because they'll tell me it's a 52 week back order and I'll have it there the next day because I'm not an idiot and I know how to use the internet. Um, but the biggest issue is not to, for me, it's my opinion. It's not about maintenance. It's not about acquisition. It's about, I want a shiny new truck. I want a pretty truck. I want to drive a 16. I don't want to drive an 07. I think that is the biggest obstacle because you come up with all the bullshit reasons that you can't drive an older truck that has nothing to do with uh, that, that truck's uh, drivability, that truck's roadworthiness. It's, I don't want to drive an old truck. I want to be comfortable. And I have watched even people come into this program and put comfort ahead of everything else. So that's. Well, I think, I think there's another reason for that. You can't go out and lease purchase a 2007 or older truck. Correct. So they may not want the truck per se, but they have to, in, in their mind, they have to do a lease purchase because that's the only way they can get in the business. Right. And that's what they're forced to buy. So I don't think it's necessarily that that's what the truck they want. If that's the truck they have to get in order to, um, you scratch that itch that they have by being broke, desperate, and stupid. I mean, it, it, it's a rash that you have to itch. And the only way you itch it is to buy or get into a truck one way or the other. And so that's just what you get, you know? So we, uh, you know, we, we talked about lease purchase ad nauseum. Um, I mean, my God, we just saved a guy's life. I mean, literally saved his financial life, you know? Yep. Um, little, little side note here and then we'll get back to what we're doing. Well, really this, this, this doesn't, this is, some side this, 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 is, this is the story. <laughs> this is, this is a living, breathing story. You know, we, we leave the names out to protect the innocent, but, uh, or in this case, maybe the guilty, um, but, um, young man, uh, signed a lease purchase for a 2012 Kenworth, Kenworth. T700, mm -hmm. um, arm. pack our motor, Junk. um, called, uh, started watching a podcast. He wanted to bring that truck to Landstar. So he, he leased, purchased it and he applies to Landstar and he's in the process of being qualified and he happens to stumble on the podcast. And of course he said to himself, Oh shit, you know? And, <laughs> uh, and he called the next day, you know, and, uh, or not called, but he emailed uh, desperately. And, uh, you know, I could, I could, I could see it in his, in his voice. I couldn't hear, you know? And so we immediately jumped on it and, and talked to him and, you know, and we said, look, you know, uh, if you can get out from under this thing, do everything you can in the world to do it. And go see. So he tries and comes back and says that he can't, he couldn't get out from under it. The other thing is his wife's a business major. And I don't think she, she still doesn't understand that that truck is not an asset. She, she looks right. at it from the normal point of view from someone that doesn't know about trucks or the trucking industry that, oh, well, that truck has got value. She doesn't understand it has negative value, you know. But, um, so anyway, he, um, he couldn't get out of it. He didn't think. So we worked up a deal where we were going to actually bring the truck on for him and put it in our fleet and let him drive his own truck. And we would, 
mentor him, monitor it, you know, try to Im try to soften the impact of whatever that was going to happen to happen to him. And we, we, we get him, we get him through orientation and uh, he goes to pick up the truck. And, it, and now it, you know how long it takes to get qualified land. It had been like three weeks. Okay. He goes to yep. pick up the truck and it's not drivable. You know, it's, it won't run. It's got problems. They can't fix it. It's Friday night. They go home and leave it over the weekend. So, um, cause God forbid we'd stay and try to serve the customer. Anyway. Oh no, no, I, that's beside the point. But, um, so anyway, he, uh, he gets a hold of him on Monday and, and he actually, well, here's what happened. He, he, he went to Indianapolis to orientation at, Land, at Landstar Silver there. And this place happened to be in Indianapolis, the home office. So we said, look, after you get out in Indianapolis, get in your rental car and run over there and go face to face with these guys and see if we can't get you out of this deal, you know? And, uh, he goes over there, he'd paid $3,500 cash down. And I figured, uh, I figured this had no shot whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. We were like, you know, give it a shot. Zero you know? faith. Go over there and get, uh, you know, he's a football player. He, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty healthy guy. So go over there and get, you know, kind of intimidated a little bit. See if you can't at least look worst case scenario, leave the 3,500 on the table and walk away, tear the contract up. Okay. And he calls me and he goes, Hey, <laughs> They gave me all my money. Well, they, I don't know if he's got it yet, but they're going to send him all of his money. They, they tore the contract up voluntarily, gave us 3500 bucks back. I'm like, holy smoke, you know. Yep. But, you know, now he's still going to come here. We're going to put him in another truck. Um, and uh, but but now he he doesn't have the risk of this 2012. You know, you've heard us talk about these trucks. You know, when you get to 2008 up to about 14, maybe 15. That's, that's like a, a minefield, you know, it's yep. just, you're, you're just waiting to step on a mine. Okay. And we've seen it over and over and over and over again. You know, now look, everybody's got the exception. Hell, I had the exception in the Mercedes. Okay. I got the only one they ever made, you know, that was worth a yeah. shit. So there's going to be a few people that come out of here and unscathed, but there's going to be a whole lot more that don't, you know, and again, it's, if you can afford it, I don't care what you buy. If you can write a check for it and you can look at, but if you're going to first time owner operator in your first truck, first time in business, that is a disaster waiting to happen because you can't, you won't have enough money saved to be able to, to have yourself a, uh, a, a reserve big enough to, to survive, you know? So anyway, the guy is, uh, is, uh, is here now and, uh, he doesn't have that truck behind him and, uh, you know, he doesn't, he probably even himself doesn't realize how close he came to, 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 uh, to a, to a disaster, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. a little, little podcast production note. I need you to be real careful. You're cutting out every once in a while and it might be that cord that came unplugged while you were before the show. So just, just watch that as you're moving around there. Cause I've heard you cut out a couple of times. Okay. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> podcast when, note. when I was, when I was talking with this guy, um, as we were leading up to this, I mean, I, I was, I was just in my mind screaming, please walk away from the $3,500. I know that's a lot of money. Um, especially when you're just a regular average company driver and I'm going, if they will let you out, even if it costs you $3,500, it's worth every penny because this can bankrupt you. And that's what really makes me angry about these. And I used to do it myself. I'm like, well, I can't really trash the lease thing because I did it and I was moderately successful. At least I didn't go broke. You know, I, I leased a truck from Anderson for two years and everything went well. I made more money than I did as a company driver. Um, I work like an animal. Um, but I've just gotten to the place now where. I don't, I don't want to hear about your one in a million success story, you know, I, th because these things are bankrupting people left and right, probably destroying relationships, destroying marriages. Also, these corporations can fatten up their wallets and it's just, it's criminal. Um, and if I believed in making stuff illegal, I'd make it illegal. Um, but I don't, I don't need to do that. I just need y'all to stop doing it. You know, just stop. It, if if nobody signs up for this garbage, they'll stop doing it. You know, but as long as people keep signing up for this slavery um, and this stupidity that that's destroying 
lives, um, destroying careers. There's nothing wrong with driving a truck. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a good job. It's a great opportunity, but you take people that would probably enjoy it. You make their lives absolutely miserable. And then they walk away and never come back and they leave you, leave us with the ones that do stick around. God help us. Um, but we just don't want to talk about the risk and, and having lived it, um, and, and watched plenty of people go through it and just suffer. Um, you know, it's just, it's just craziness and, 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 and it's a human thing, you know, at, what was the thing I read the other day? Um, humans would rather be, would rather commit to being wrong than admit that they were wrong. You know, I, it's, it's passionately stupid, you know? Uh, well, and the other, and the other part of the story was that he was going to pay $58,000 for a 2012 Kenworth. Could 25. Write, you could write a check for 25 and buy it. You know, he's going to pay double plus for it. That's the, you know, that's the, you know, when you re reduce all this down, you know, to just numbers, y'all know I'm a numbers guy. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Why would you volunteer? You wouldn't voluntarily pay pay double for anything else you do, you know? No, absolutely uh, not. And so you go in there and you you lay down and you just bend over and get to Vaseline out and say, "Hey, I, I want to drive that truck so bad that I can make that four hundred dollar week payment, and I don't really give a shit how much I'm paying for it because I'm going to make that payment. I'm going to make some money. Maybe. What you was that Dave message Ramsey? we got today? Wasn't that eleven hundred dollars that we that we got from one of our guys? Eleven hundred dollar week guy signed up for. Well, Richie, Richie knew somebody that was yeah. that was going to sign up with Covenant. Double trouble because now you're leasing from a carrier. I mean, at least at least this other guy leased it from a leasing company. I'll hand him that. And yeah. you know, I looked the I looked every letter of the lease. I read every letter. As far as the lease goes, it wasn't that bad. Okay, I mean, look, they even let him out of it. So you got you know, can't can't beat him up too bad. The problem is it still costs $58,000 for a 2012 KW. That's the problem with it. You know, hell, I could put two trucks on a road for $58,000. Okay. So it's, uh, it, it just, it just doesn't make sense to do that. It's, it's, it don't be so desperate to, to, to basically buy yourself a job. Cause that's all you're doing. Most of these people who buy these lease purchases from carriers make less than they did as a company driver, you know? But they mm -hmm. get to say, oh, it's my truck. Kind of. <laughs> sort of. You don't have a title to it, by the way. Oh, and this this give this is a walk away deal that we're talking about today. Oh, yeah. Walk away. Well Yeah. And, and and it says either party can walk away. Yeah. Exactly. Damn right. They exactly. walk away with your money. Exactly. They walk away with your time. They walk away with your And let uh, me tell you what happens when you walk away. Okay. Here's what happens when you walk away from that walk away lease. That they're going to take that truck straight to the auction and they're going to sell it. They're going to make you pay whatever it takes to get it auction ready. And then difference between what they get at the auction and what they would have made with you staying in it. They're coming after you. You better walk away. You better run away. Cause as soon as they find you, they're, they're, you know, they, they will prosecute as best they can to get that money. And I've seen it happen, you know? So, or, um, or they'll just, or they'll just find the next sucker in line and put them in it. You know, especially you get it from a, from a carrier. I, I watched that the truck that I had at ATS, you know, $50,000 we spent in seven months and nothing ever fixed it. And I think it was, it was Zeke to call me. He's a man. I just ran into a guy driving your old truck. And I'm like, well, did you tell him? He was like, Oh yeah. I tell him he didn't care. He's like, well, man, it hasn't caused me any problems. I'm thinking yet, yet is the key word. Get ready, brother. But even, even if you walk away from the care and they resell it, first of all, they're going to make you pay whatever it takes to get it ready for the next yep. driver. And, oh, by the way, all that forced escrow that you have had, you get to walk away and leave that too, by the way. Yep. So, I uh, listen, way, way back when I, probably my very first consulting client was a, a guy at the CMC, and he had a lease with, mm, I don't know, Prime, maybe, I can't remember. But anyway, I was shocked at the forced escrow, he had, they, he had to put X number of dollars every week in a maintenance account, every week in a, in a, in an escrow account, all this money. And oh, I know what it was. I know it was, he came, he came to work for me. He came to work for me. He ha he lost $13,000 on a walkaway lease. Mm. 
$13,000 it cost him to walk away. Now, they told him he'd get his money back, but he never did. Okay? And, well, I won't go there. Anyway, um, you know, the bigger picture here is why, why are you so desperate to sell your soul to the devil to drive a damn truck, you know? And if you're going to lease it from a, from a carrier, you're going to make less than you did as a company driver. If you lease it from a leasing company, you're going to put it on with the carrier unless you're going to get your own authority. And that would be stupid right now. Um, it, it, there's, there's places, there are plenty of people that looking for drivers that had that where you can go get a decent job, live beneath your means, save the damn money, save the damn money and go write a check for it. That changes everything. Now you don't have to worry about the pressure. You know, this guy that's leasing this truck for 1100 bucks a week, Merry Christmas, mf -er. You know, how are you going to, how are you going to go home for Christmas and make that $1,100 a week? And, and you probably as well stay home two weeks because you can't deliver any, any freight anyway. Right. But now you're 2200 bucks in the hole by being home for the holidays with your family. How long does it take to work out of that hole? You know, just doesn't make it. the end sense. of January. I've done And it. you don't own it because if you can walk away, guess what? So can they, you know? I know y'all think we make this up, but we, I get, I get this all the time. I read it every day, you know, well, and, you get um, the phone calls, you get the phone calls from the people that are, you know, I, I think what am I, I going to do now? I told a couple of weeks about the, the, the lady called me crying, you know, balling $830 a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. Her husband's lease payment had a stroke, which I can see why he had a stroke, but <laughs> Now he can't drive the truck and now they've used up all their escrow and now they can't make the truck payment, nor can they have them got any money for their household goods, household um, bills, all because he lost his job in, during the pandemic and in September decided to go lease a truck. Yeah. I don't see why that's the answer. Why is that the answer that everybody goes to? Let me just lease a truck. I can afford the payments, you know? You read them all day long on Facebook. Where can I, where's the best place to lease a truck? There's not one, you know, uh, it, it, why, why is that the only way that you can get yourself a job is to go lease a truck? My God. I mean, it, there's a bigger problem here we're dealing with. Not that it's not the truck, not the lease. Why is yeah. it that you think that that's the only way you can do this? You know? Now, look, we're just a little company here. We, our people come here and make 80 to 100 grand a year with zero. They don't lose anything. There's lots of places you can get jobs paying. Rent. I mean, everywhere I look, there are people looking for uh, owner operators, they say, you know, but the, the, if you can't, if you can't get a job in this market, there's a problem. Okay. Maybe that's why you're going to lease a truck. Maybe you're unemployable. Yeah. Well, there's a whole different story there. Okay. So. <laughs> But anyway, well, right, there's, guess. there's a, there is a level of, um, just I call it standard American laziness, you know, that I don't, I don't want to work for it. I don't want to wait for it. I want it now. Here's, here's the magic pill. Here's, here's the quick and easy route. Here's the, the get rich quick. Um, and I see all those, all those people making a lot of big money at Landstar. I, I got to get in there and get some of that, you know? Mm -hmm. Except well, I want, I want some of that freedom so I can go home and sit on my ass and not haul freight. Oh yeah. You know, I love that one. Yeah. We call it undisciplined freedom when we talk about, you know, and yeah, you can do that. You can, you can decide whether to go to work or not. At least payment's not going to decide whether it comes this week or not. Yeah. It's going to be there, you know, and then you have the, uh, you, all of this works. You can make the payments. You're doing great. You're making me, you're making money. Of course, you know, nobody saves any money. I saw a guy today on my Instagram dragging about how he can only work two days a week now and still make the same thing he used to make working five days a week. Mm. So that's what he's doing. What a, what a moron. Okay. Take, take the best time in history of the trucking company and piss it away working two days a week instead of working five days a week. So that you still have nothing when it's all over and over, over and done with, you know, yeah. as opposed to kicking your ass and making, I guess if he makes in two days, what he made in five days, if he Triple. worked five days, he'd make two and a half times what he did, what he did in yeah. two days and put that money away. So that now he's got money because when it's all over and done with, he's going to be still be back where he started broke. 
Okay. Then desperate and then stupid in that order. So, um, where was I going with this? Um, hmm, I was going to cite an example of something. Anyway. Um, well, they have the potential. Um, I mean, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a glass half empty kind of guy, but it, it, the, the potential for this fall, uh, th this crash to be real, the one that's coming, I don't know when it's coming. I'm not going to try to predict when it's coming, but it's coming. Um, it, it has the potential to be the ugliest because we're, we're now in the grid. We're in unprecedented times with an unprecedented market that we've never, ever, ever seen before. Um, and you know, something that goes up that high could come down really, really, really hard. And I used to be, even after I came here, I was like, Oh man, this is great. I'm in 2018 and, and I'm, you know, I can fall off a log and make money, but what's going to happen when it crashes. And then I watched and I went, Oh wow. Well, Hey, our model works in every market, but well, this one, when it comes, it's, it's going to be bloody and it's, it's going to destroy a lot of these least people right, right off. Well, and then people, the ones that don't know how to work, is, people think this is normal. They come into business right now. I've seen people complain about rates right now. <laughs> Isn't that great? The people come in here thinking, well, this is normal. You know, I mean, this, uh, I'm going to make all my decisions about buying a truck or leasing a truck or whatever on this current market. And I will tell you right now, we're in a three year extended bubble that used to last about 18 months. Okay. So now I don't know, you can, you can, you can try to be the crystal ball guy and tell when it's going to, when it's going to happen, but it, there's not any way in the world it's going to sustain. All right. It's going to correct. It is going to correct. And when it does, the last time there was a correction, 25% of all MC numbers went away. All right. So I thought that'll be, that'll be small change this time because a whole bunch of MC numbers are thinking that this is normal. And, uh, and guess what? When you can't, when you can't operate your truck at the, at the, at the average rate that, the, that the market sets, either you either lose money or you go home or both. So I don't know. Um, go ahead and, and spend $175,000 for a truck. I don't know. Um, and then take the chance that you're going to get that paid for before this bubble bust. Uh, most people are putting those kinds of trucks on five, six, and seven year notes. So I guarantee you, you're not going to get paid for before the bubble bursts. Yeah. And, um, and what do you do? Um, you know, I've heard people, I'm just going to turn it back in. Well, it, there's some other parts of that statement you're leaving out. I'm going to turn it back in and take a repossession and ruin my credit and also probably go bankrupt because they are going to come after you and you can't write the check for the difference. All right. They're going to chase you. They're going to, it, it why, <laughs> what is the, what is the carrot at the end of that that makes you want to do it? I, I guess I, I cannot understand it. You know, you can find yourself a really, really good job in this industry, making really, really good money and just live below your, below your means for a couple of years and save money. Okay. You know, I heard a guy the other day talking about he's bragging on one of the Facebook groups about his cost per mile. He was his cost per mile was was really, really low. He thought it was two dollars and something a mile. OK. And I'm looking at it really close and there's, and there's no driver paying there. And I mentioned I said, well, what are you 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 got is it your truck autonomous? He goes, no, I, I drive. I goes, well, you don't pay yourself. Well, yeah, that's my profit. And I'm like, well, I get that. But. You don't value, you have to value your time and your effort in the cost. I mean, that's, that's part of it. Unless you just, unless you can just do it for free, you know, and he had a hard time understanding that. But when you start putting in his, you know, and I, I explained to him, I said, look, do it, look at it this way. Okay. Leave out the IRS regulations. Okay. About this. Let's for, set that aside for right now. But if you had to pay somebody else to do that job, you know, you're, 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 bragging about a business factor okay a business number and 
now you're running your business not like a business because you're not valuing value you in your time. And by the way, a lot of people do this. Okay, they place no value on their time. Yeah. Um, and then they start understanding what I have to pay to get this job done that I do. That's the value. Okay. That's, that's the value. That's what you're, that's what it really costs to operate that truck. Well, now we're a whole different number. Okay. So, um, he's on the right track. You know, you, you do need to lower your cost of doing business, but you got to keep all the, you got to keep all the numbers in there. You can't leave some of them out, especially big ones like driver pay. Okay. So, um, anyway, um, well, let's, let's, let's shift into a little bit, you know, more practical. Cause let's, let's say that you live in the people's communist Republic of California. All right. And you don't want to move. Um, well, the and 07 you, and older, did you start this com, uh, this chapter, let's talk about something more practical and then you go to yeah. California. Okay. <laughs> But there are people, okay, there there are people who, for whatever reason, can't, don't want to, won't leave California, okay? Um, and so that comes with a requirement that you have to drive a 2000, what is it, 9 now, 10? I don't even think you can drive the 08s now. Anyway, um, so what do you do, right? Well, yes, you're going to have to drive a truck with a DPF, and probably DEF with a catalyst. Um, so how do you lunatic that? Well, it starts with the proper research and the proper truck. And listen, there have been times I was convinced Freightliner was the way to go. There's, you know, I, we haven't tried a Cummins yet. You know, we've got these two KWs with pack cars and so far so good. Um, I've been down to DD 15 road and they can have them. Um, but also that was a 2010. Maybe I'm judging. Probably not, but whatever. Okay. So you've got to do the research first. You've got to rig dig it. You have to dyno it. You need an oil sample. You need all that stuff. You've got to buy this truck as cheaply as you can buy it. And you've got to pay cash. It is absolutely a thousand times more important to pay cash for a newer truck than it is an older truck. Um, because you absolutely cannot have, um, a payment, um, when you got that kind of risk. Um, now, fortunately we have Pittsburgh power. Um, we believe that the catalyst works as advertised and that the diesel force cleaning, um, is a game changer. Right. So if I was in the position right now, if, if I had money in the bank and I was ready to go buy a truck and I had to have a new truck, number one, it's going to be a 2016 or newer. I'm going to research it and I'm going to check it out. I'm going to have somebody like Carl go over it. Then I'm going to take it straight to Pittsburgh power day one. We're doing the diesel force cleaning. And we're going to run catalyst in every tank. Um, that's the, it's, it's just not worth it. You know, we have seen this diesel force cleaning do wonders, you know, because soot is the enemy of these trucks and these sensors get dirty. And I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this, so I don't know how much real truth there is in it, but electrical inspections, making sure that all of your grounds are good, that you don't have a bunch of rust, um, especially around the catalyst, um, you know, I don't, I don't know that this is a big thing, but you know, it's ohms, you know, all these sensors are just measuring voltage and ohms. And if that stuff gets out of whack because you've got a rusted ground wire, that could be just as, as guilt. And you know, these mechanics are not going to check for that stuff. They're going to be, oh, computer says sensor is bad. You know, the wiring could be chewed in two and they'll be like, Oh, I put a new sensor on it. Even though the wiring is completely burned, you know, so there's ways to do it. Um, but it just is going to take a lot of patience. And that's unfortunately what most people don't have. Well, and the more expensive the truck is going to be, the more investment you need to make in that research. Cause you know, when we're out here buying trucks for 10, 15 grand. We don't put them on a dyno. We don't, you know, I mean, we have crawl look at it, but we don't, but if you're going to spend 40, $50,000 for a truck, you know, 
you, you can't afford to make a mistake at that. So you, you, you have to do some, you know, you have to do a lot more research than, than even we do, you know, and you, and you can't give up on the specs. I mean, just because you buy a newer truck still can be spec wrong, can be, can be spec to do the wrong job and won't get the fuel mileage. All right. So you still have to do all that. And then you have to throw in, you know, you, you, you the first thing you got to watch out for is make sure it's not deleted. Okay. Cause it's hard to buy a truck right now. It's not deleted, you know? Um, and, um, cause that's the first thing people want to do. That's how they solve the problems. Delete them. I read, la- I read, uh, last week, uh, EPA called a guy and it was 400, it was four, it was $4,917 fine to the truck driver and $49,000, $170 fine for the guy who did the deletion. So look, that, that you're not always going to be able to do that. You think that the government is going to turn their backs on that gravy train and that low hanging fruit, you know, yeah, that's going to make the ELD mandate look funny. Okay. When they finally figure out and, and everybody's on Facebook bragging about it and they're telling everybody where they're getting it done. So it doesn't take it. It doesn't take Sherlock home to, to track this deal, deal down. All right. So it's going to be a game. And it's just and dumb. Soon, and it's as soon just... as people start getting their, their penis stepped on for $50,000 at a time, they're going to stop doing it. All right. And then, and now, and you, know, you can't, what do you, you can't trade the truck in. You can't go anywhere reliable and get it worked on. You got to go to shade tree, you know, Joe to work on it. Cause none of the Detroit shops, none of the dealerships, none of the places that, you know, that have trained people are going to touch it. You know, so it's just, it's just one problem after another, after another to solve a problem that you basically caused yourself. All right. Yeah. Uh, and, and look, I, I am, I could absolutely not care less about what's legal. Okay. That that's not the issue. I, I couldn't give a rip. I have, I have absolutely no respect whatsoever for the law or the people writing it. That's not what this is about. It's risk management. Okay. Deleting the DEF is a band aid. You're not fixing anything. You are, you're taking a shortcut that is rife with risk. It's risky that the truck is going to break worse than it was before it was deleted. Like a cracked head. Yeah. We've had plug that. it off the GR crossover. Um, <clears throat> you, you think that's a magic pill, but it's not. Okay. It's not a magic pill and it's, and it's just dumb. Now you're not going, you're not going to find anybody that that is more critical of the shop industry in this country, in this industry than we are. It's a, it's a joke. However, part of being in business and part of being a responsible business owner is building those relationships with people like we have with Carl and a few others, um, that can, that can actually solve some of these problems correctly. Pittsburgh power has shown they can fix them, you know, um, but this just, why well, just delete it? I'm not taking that risk. I'm not going to do it. If, if I can't, if I can't operate the truck the right way, I'll help back up. Not the right way. If I can't operate the truck, um, you know, in a reasonable fashion without having to go th- th- jump off th- these hoops and I don't need to be in business. That, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. You know. The um hmm. I was going to give you another example, but I can't remember the where it was. Um well I know what I was gonna say. The the people that that jump to deleting as the fix are also the same guys that have the truck stop tuners, tuner ECMs out in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, I get, I get the desperation, you know, it's like you, you go spend $10,000 and it's not fixed and you go spend another $10,000 and it's not fixed. And it's like, well, hell I got to make money. Somebody turn this off. You know, somebody just make my truck work. Well, that wasn't your, that wasn't your DPF that caused that. That was your way of running your business that caused that you picked the wrong truck. You're hauling the wrong freight you're not accounting, you know, th- there's, there's, there's plenty of problems that need addressed up to that point that got you to that point. 
ripping the DEF off of the side of the, of the motor is not solving anything. So, so let's go back. All right. So, you know, again, we're taking this, this viewpoint from a risk management viewpoint. Okay. Risk management. So it, it's safe to say that if you're going to go into business for the first time, and buy your first truck, and you live in California, there is only a certain amount of risk man management that you can, uh, that, that you can seek and, or, and can get. There, it, is, it is going to be riskier to go to California than it is not to go to California, only because you cannot escape buying a truck with DPF. You know? Now, the, the, the best way to minimize or mitigate that risk that we know of and have any, you know, I guess reliable um, data on and reliable information about real people, real, you know, real results is the diesel force cleaning to get the, the soot that's already in there out and run the catalyst to keep it from getting soot back up. Now, look, I'm not a chemistry major, but you can, you can search online for the for the catalyst run. There's all kinds of videos and stuff. We've actually met the chemist who create, who invented it. And even after talking to her for about 45 minutes, I couldn't even get up and walk. I was so dizzy. Okay. <laughs> so it's uh, beyond me, but, but basically it, it lowers the temperature that it takes for diesel fuel to completely combust a hundred percent. And because of that, it doesn't make soot. So the catalyst is, that's what a catalyst does is it changes the chemistry makeup of things. So in my little lay person's mind, it lowers the temperature of complete exhaust uh, uh, comp uh, or a complete combustion of diesel fuel, even in the DPF. It lowers the temperature that 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 um, uh, that that the fuel that gets to the DPF is uh, is whatever it does there. Um, Just trust so, the science, Larry. Just trust the science. I, I'm trust. I trust the science. Let me get my mask out right here. I trust the science. I had one laying here somewhere, so. No, I'm trusting that. Let's hit a let's hit a couple comments right here. Let's see. Purple Yeti, ready for my monthly Larry Long special. <laughs> You're a sick puppy, <laughs> Carlos. Delete the truck and live happily ever after. Nay, nay, Carlos. Uh, that happily ever after. The, the first part of that, I guess you could do, but the happily ever after, that's not necessarily provable. Okay. Uh, we've 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 seen what happens when you when you. Uh, we, we bought it. I bought a, I didn't buy a deleted truck. Okay. I had a guy that wanted me to manage a truck, bought a deleted truck much against my judgment. Yeah. And he did it anyway. Well, we had the truck, I don't know, 90 days and all of a sudden it hydro locked and we towed it in. You know, one of the reasons why that, uh, I was thinking about this the other day, cause we kept talking about that $25,000, $30,000 overhaul that we did on that truck. Mm -hmm. Part of that was the $8,000 it took to un, undelete the delete. Okay. Yep. So there was, so that's another thing. You, you, it blows up and you got to fix it. And now you got to fix it back. Okay. If you're going to get anybody reliable to do your, do your in frame. Okay. So anyway, I thought I'd throw it in there. Mysterious Rocky. Carl. <laughs> Listen. Mysterious Carl. He can he find, mysterious. Hey, what you going to do about this? He can always find them. I saw him the other day. He gotten in, he did a road service call and gotten in some kind of poison ivy, <laughs> poison sumac, I think. It had eat him up. I, he took his shirt off or his jacket off, and he had gauze wrapped all up his arm, and he held the gauze on with electrical tape. Listen, y'all y'all think he ain't real, but listen, <laughs> there's never been another one like him. I promise you that. You guys are Actually, going... matter of fact, I told, I told, uh, some friends of mine, <laughs> my, my grandfather, LP Wood, uh, been dead 20 years. Um, but I'm, I, you know, we're talking about Carl and I said, if y'all ever wanted to know what it was like being around LP Wood, it's, it's, it's Carl bone cutter. Cause you know, <clears throat> he could weld fix anything. And if he put it together, it wasn't ever coming apart. Driving and streaming to Belgrade, Montana. All right, that ought to that ought to make your. Uh... Oh, here we Why? go. Why? Why? <clears throat> well, it's making the time pass by listening to the 
best podcast in the universe. But why Belgrade, Montana? <clears throat> well, it's big sky country. It's beautiful up there. Um, so the, I saw this one. Ever heard of a girl called Happiness by the Mile and how she got multiple brand new freight liners? So I'm aware of her channel. I haven't watched any of her stuff. Um, she's, I'm pretty sure she's either a FedEx contractor or somehow associated with one. Um, I'm assuming this means that she has bought or le well, she has leased a bunch of trucks and she's probably, I would assume, uh, copying the 2% operating ratio idea of running a trucking company. And, um, I would expect, I would expect her to crash and burn, burn here shortly. It works great until, until you can't, until you can't find freight to meet your minimum, your cost per mile. Okay. That CPM that I bet you don't even know what it is. Okay. Cause right mm -hmm. now you can do, you can, you can just accidentally make money right now, not knowing anything. If you don't believe me, look on Facebook at all these people that want you to build a million dollar truck empire and never own a truck. Mm -hmm. so jump on in there is all i got to say we'll see who's around after the next little day and we've i've lived listen i've, I've only been in this business 12 years i've been through three of these okay <laughs> and um hey i'm still here okay yep. not only are we here but we're doing pretty good okay so R rocky says they'll be screaming when it gets back to normal rates and blaming everyone else and the don't haul cheap freight bumper stickers will be flying <laughs> no, it'll be worse than that they'll be back in washington dc trying to give another oh, yeah. trump hat yeah they'll be driving around the Capitol and yeah blowing their horns and going i we demand three dollars and fifty cents a mile why because we bought a truck okay bless your little heart the government will push out all the old equipment. That is the goal. Could yeah, I, it Could is. Be. I mean, they. Th but here's the thing about that. There's always going to be old equipment. It might not be 07, but it might be 2015. Yeah. So that's, that's the whole, that's what we're saying here. Okay. We, we realize that there's a sunset on 07s. Matter of fact, right now, unless you live in South America, you think that sunset is already, is already happening. Okay. But, um, that, that doesn't change anything. You know, we can, the only reason we do those things is because we can deal with the engineering that was required to be put on those trucks at the factory from 04 to 07. We can, we can have, that doesn't hurt us now. There's no risk involved in that. Now we're going to, we're going to just skip over 08 to 14 because that's just, that's just stepping in crap. Okay. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the 15s come down in price, which they, they're going to, especially, when all this craziness is over with and oh, they're wow. affordable for our program, for people to be able to pay cash for it and not have a truck payment, then we'll do what we do with the 2015 and we'll make it work. That will be the old equipment because everybody else at that time will be in 2023s and 2024s and whatever it is that goes with that. Some of them might even be electric. Some of them might even be autonomous. Who the hell knows, but they'll always be old equipment. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nathan, I moved and went to Arizona. I'm about to move again because everyone is moving here and I'm tired of it and I need to head further east. Listen, brother, at this rate, we're all going to have to keep going east toward like Africa, you know, like they're just going to push us into the ocean or, or at least try. Uh, here's a good one. Kurt, 07s and older are hard to find. How much money do you put in one? Because a lot. Uh, I'm guessing this is a lot of them have 800,000 to a million miles. Well, yeah, our number's about 40, about 40,000. You know, if you can, you can pretty much back to front, top to bottom, rebuild one, uh, for 40 grand. The, um, the 800,000, the 800,000 to a million does not bother me. I'm more concerned about it having a, an end frame at 800,000 that there's no documentation for. I'm amazed at how many people spend fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and never get a freaking receipt? But everybody yep. that sells a truck did that, okay? Because they all yep. got in frames, but none of them have any paper, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm just uh, I'd rather buy one at eight hundred thousand miles or a million miles and give him ten thousand dollars for it and not having have done that quote in frame and me do it myself so I know how it was done, as opposed to me having to pay twenty thousand dollars for that truck because it's only got a hundred thousand miles on imaginary in frame. So that, the, the miles don't bother me. You know, look, the, all the miles do is wear the motor out. Okay. 
The motor's not that expensive. We just we just rebuilt one in Florida in two days, and I think he spent. I don't know, Rocky. What'd you spend? You're on here watching. Yeah, he's watching. Tell us what. T- tell you well, Tell us what you spent, Rocky. This old guy tears his motor down over a weekend and puts it back together. His mechanic, okay. I'm I know. Guessing, the, I know the parts were seventy five hundred bucks because I wrote the check. Okay. Yeah. So, and then I don't know. He's probably got ten, twelve grand in. I'm going to guess. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we did. He did extras. You know, a new turbo and a manifold, and he did some extra stuff that like wasn't absolutely necessary at the time as far as just rebuilding it's probably right. 12 well because rocky loves that truck okay so it's his baby so he fixes everything on it to be brand new but look it's good for another million miles okay um so it's not uh you know it's not that big a deal okay i mean look in this business at landstar if you're at landstar as a bco and you're not making three grand a week to the truck after expenses, before taxes, you're dicking off. Okay. How long, how many weeks does it take to pay for that? You know, three or four weeks, that truck is paid for. Now you're making money with no debt. So I, that doesn't bother me in the least. I can fix that truck and I know it's fixed. I can go spend double that on a new truck and still the next week have the head gasket go or have the one right. box go or have whatever go that so for the audio listeners, Rocky has responded that it's 20,000 doing everything. The new manifold, turbo, injectors, radiator, fan hub, fan, uh, I see, radiator, um, cooling tank. Um, yeah. So, I mean, 20 grand, um, you know, you put a paint job on that truck and it's probably worth 50, you know, so uh, now here's one I am curious about. Wait until these guys go to rebuild these DD15. Nobody <laughs> seems to know how much the end frame is. All I right. know what it is. <laughs> I can tell you what it is. <laughs> well, we haven't done it. We haven't done it personally, but we were no. told that you pretty much have to swing a motor into it because I guess the cam comes out the back or, right. or something. There's, I know they're rear gear, you know, which is why they're so much quieter. They, they don't have the bull gear on the front. They have the rear gear. Um, and so now this was told to me by a Detroit service manager. So take that with a grain of salt, but he said 30 grand to swing a motor. But I think that was 30 grand plus the labor to swing that motor. I mean, hell we were, we were going to be 20 grand just to put a damn head on it, you know? So John might know we, we've got a guy that working with us now that is a, a long, long time senior Detroit tech. And, um, matter of fact, he's going to be at the event in Ohio. So you guys want to pick his brain. He'll be, he's going to be there, but he may, he may know he's, um, he's just said he's got 1.3 million. He just, he just bought a 2002. I want to say it is John he's got 1.3 million on it. And he's, you know, it, 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 it just, it, he drives it every day. Okay. I know I dispatch him. <laughs> so, He's, uh, and he, he's a great guy, but, uh, John, you might know the, the, that number about the DD 15, you know, what it cost to in frame one, but, um, I don't know. I that don't, was the, it, that was the crux of the argument when, when the head cracked on the one that we had and it was going to be, um, 20 grand. And the conversation was, okay, do we want to spend 20 grand to fix this truck and still own it? And it was like, hell no. So Larry flew to Florida and bought a Volvo for nine grand. With a Detroit. Yep. With a Detroit. Caveat there, with a Detroit. Um, so, so let's see. Rocky. Come. Now, again, guys, keep in mind here, okay? All you guys that, that are that have got money in the bank and you're not first-timers, I, we don't care what you drive, okay? We're, we're advising the first-time owner-operator buying his first truck. Keep that in mind, okay? So, you know, if you want to buy a 121 inch ARI sleeper, that, that's fine, but you're not going to buy that as the first truck, as a first time owner operator, if you listen to us. So keep all that in mind when you're thinking about this, right? This is our market. This is who our program is directed at. This is who our podcast is directed at, is to keep first time people from stepping on their penis and not being in business after a couple of years because they didn't minimize risk. That's really what this is all about. Sorry, go ahead. John responds and says that a uh, DD15 is double the cost of a 60 series. 
There you go. Uh, and Rocky says they had a buddy here spent 40000 on a pack car, cam and head, 2017 Pete. Had to pull the motor to pull the cam out. That's okay. So that's it's what the, we heard. It's that's the pack car that has, yeah, that pulled the cam out the back and down for nine weeks. Come on now. You know, um, it's crazy, y'all. Fellow BCEO here. I have a 2015 Freightliner with a Cummins. Hey, there's you. We were asking that question. We're, the other we're, day. That's what we're looking at right there. With 462000 I have someone wants to buy it when the app comes through with Landstar. If so, I'm looking to getting a 20, 2003, I guess, Freightliner. Yeah. Uh, okay. Or pre, maybe you meant pre, pre-emission. Yeah. <clears throat> um, look, man. I... Uh-oh, you went away. Well, I think Chris has left the... The uh, building. I don't even know. Oh, there he I is. That. There he is. He's the back. Hell? He's back for a curtain minutes. call. <laughs> uh, risk, 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 risk. That's what this is about. It, if you want to be obsessed with something, be obsessed with that. And, of course, this is coming from the guy that my risk meter never worked, ever, you know. Um, and now sometimes it works a little too well, and I'm skittish about getting into stuff, but well, let me add, let me add to that. If you're going to be obsessed with something, be obsessed with making a profit. Well, yeah, that cures all ills. Money in the bank fixes a lot of stuff. Okay, it keeps you from making these stupid decisions. Okay, so minimizing risk lets you stay in business, working hard while while um, we're in the best market we've ever been in. Lets you put cash away. Um. You know, it's just, it's not, it's, if you take the trucking out of it and take all of the cowboy and romance and all the stuff out of this, and you just look at it from the number standpoint, guys, it's not rocket science. It's not even hard. Okay. It's basically common sense. If you leave trucking out of it, yeah, but we can't get truck drivers to keep trucking out of it because they're so involved with all the glamour of it. But that call that does is cost you money. All that is doing is costing you money. And I don't know about you. I ask our people this all the time. All right. You've been working all of your damn life, all of your life. How much money have you handled in your lifetime? Okay. Write me a check. Write me the biggest check you can cash right now. And it will embarrass you what that number is compared to what you've handled. Yeah. So if you're going to get obsessed about something, get obsessed about putting money in the bank. Okay. Okay. Money. That's what we're all doing this for. I guarantee you, every one of you quit tomorrow if the money stopped. Every freaking one of you leaves tomorrow with the money stops. All that chrome and stuff. I don't need that shit anymore. I ain't getting money. Can't afford it. But yet, but let, but yet you spend your money on that and put it instead of saving it, or you spend your money on a buy, on leasing a, a new truck and paying triple for it instead of going out and finding a used truck and making some money with it. I mean, I've never met a customer yet that refused to load one of our trucks. Because, oh, my God, look at that thing. That's an 03. We can't do that. Never once. Nor have I ever had anybody offer me more money if we showed up there with a new truck. So if the customers don't care and the customers won't pay anymore for a new truck, explain to me, explain to me why I want to spend more money to have one of them. Other than the fact that I want style over substance. Style over substance. That's a big, 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 big problem. Yeah. Well, let's see. I think we covered all of the comments and questions. We're coming up on an hour. We're trying to keep these things a little bit shorter than we used to. It's really, um, really hard, though. Yeah. Okay, so next week, just a programming note, uh, I'm going to be on vacation. So no podcast for you. Um. And the week after that, we will have the event. I will have a pre-recorded episode for you. Um, should be on that last weekend. Uh, our interview with Rick Burnett from Lane Access. Um, maybe try to, I might try to find one more interview to put together and maybe try to post that next week. Uh, but uh, y'all be looking forward to that. And then we will be back on the trail. Um. 
after the event and I'm sure we'll have a, a big story to tell after that. And, uh, are you bringing bourbon? Do we get bourbon at the, at the event or uh, maybe Sunday night? I don't okay. think we're going to dip into it between them. <laughs> Between okay. the time, well, I was just—I mean, I was just checking, you know, maybe a little <laughs> teaser out there. Well, um, I don't have to bring it. They, they, you, we can buy bourbon in Ohio. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. That's uh, that's it for tonight. Everybody, be cool. Be safe. We'll see y'all next time. Later.